Twitter now has more than 100 million users, but is still searching for a way to grow revenues as it grows its network. How will Twitter monetize and how successful have its attempts been so far? I'm joined now by an early investor in Twitter, Peter Fenton, partner at Benchmark Capital. He sits on Twitter's board as well and has worked closely with its founders. Peter, welcome to Bloomberg West. Great to have you here. Thank you. Um, so first of all, I, I want to know what attracted you to Twitter in the first place. You know, five years ago, it was a completely different company. Even the co-founders say they didn't know exactly what it would become. Why did you want to invest in it? Yeah, it, you know, our, our job is to find the non-obvious. And oftentimes when you see a company like Twitter uh, or even Google um, back in the day, it's quite controversial to uh, commit a lot of capital with an unknown business model and really nothing more than the wonder that you have with the early product experience. And so in 2007, we tried to invest and, and maybe because our convictions weren't high enough for the team, you know, decided they wanted to wait to have an active West Coast investor. Um, it didn't happen. But by 2008, in late 2008 when we invested, we had a sense that this was a company that could be as important as really any company that we know of. And if you think about the Silicon Valley, about once every seven to 10 years, a company comes along that changes not just the valley, but the world. And, and by late 08, we felt that conviction. Um, and so our job is to not take no for an answer. So uh, why did we think it could be so big? Well, the natural market for Twitter is the size of the handset market. It's four billion handsets. And our view is that as a deeply mobile application, we could get to that uh, over time. Thank you. And. Um, and I think the mainstream phenomenon of Twitter, while it wasn't visible in 2008, felt to us to be right around the corner. Um, and if you look at today, 100 million active users, uh, we believe we're well on our march to that 4 billion number. Um, and there's a number of things in the product experience which should accelerate that over, over the coming years. Now, speaking of those 100 million users, the question is, how do you turn that into dollars, yeah. billions of dollars. I mean, you invested at a $250 million valuation. The valuation mm -hmm. now, you know, by some accounts, is about $6 billion, if not more. How does Twitter make good on that number? One of the things that oftentimes people compare Twitter to is a social network. And it's not a social network. It's a broadcast network. It's a one-to-many system. So in that 100 million, you have mass consumption of media. And people have opted in and shared their interests, the things that they they care deeply about and they've given us their attention and much like Google where you can take the ad of the search result and make that into content for the user Twitter's shown that they can take the ad of the tweet uh, and make it into great content for the user so they, they talk to examples like the Volkswagen launch um, 50 plus percent engagement on the tweets and these are things that are inherently interesting in the broadcast medium so um, it, it's not a site or an experience like Facebook or Yahoo or AOL, where we're trying to get hours out of people's day, we're much more of a distribution platform, similar to Google in that respect. And, and the ad unit scales with the tweets. So how many tweets are there today? There, there are 250 million tweets that go out every day. We think a meaningful number of those can be enriched with, with advertising content, which is very much the company's strategy, enhancing the user's experience, but also enhancing the advertiser's return and in, in investing in the platform. So what do you see as the future of promoted tweets and advertising within the Twitter ecosystem? Well, I think the company, and Dick has been articulate in my view about this, uh, has said first and foremost, the user experience needs to be enhanced and enriched with the monetization of the service. Um, we think that's possible, and Google is a great example of that, where uh, better results were surfaced up because the users were interested in finding things you know, after they'd queried and the intentionality was there. Um, so that logic, that basic logic of saying, allowing advertisers, of which if you look at the actual users on Twitter, in the top 100, I think somewhere between 15 to 20 percent are commercial accounts of some sort. So businesses are on Twitter, and the idea that they can engage in a way that's resonant with the users and authentic uh, to us sets up a long-term business model, much like you'd see at a, at a company like Google. Now, Twitter has grown incredibly rapidly. It's adding office space every few months. It, you know, it, there's been some management changes. Ev and Biz are gone. Jack is back. What do you think are the challenges that Twitter faces going forward? Well, the, 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 when Benchmark invested, the thesis in um, very much part of what we do in the venture business is to help build teams so that they can achieve their full potential. Um, so the thesis was that, that the team there really wanted to build and grow and be an independent company. So uh, the process to get there is not easy. 
um, you have to hire executives while you're trying to grow the lower level employee base and keep up with growth. And, and the, the principal goal for the company in the last couple of years, and it remains today, is to grow to the mainstream market. And to do that, we need a superlative engineering team. Today, the company has over 300 engineers. Um, two years ago, two and a half years ago, there were 25 employees in the company. Uh, we've grown rapidly, I think, at a pace unlike any company we've seen in recent history. And with that, there's obviously challenges. But I, I would say from the executive ranks of the company, pound for pound, I don't know of a better leadership team in place at, for a company at this scale. So that lets us think about the next phase, which is going beyond just user growth, but building the revenue model. Um, and then you look at performance. You know, Twitter was famous for a long time for having the fail well. Um, we set records in the last month on tweets per day, and the record for me was that no one talked about the fact the site went down. And, and this team has invested enormous amounts of capital, energy, and know-how to build a platform that lets us think about billions of users. And to do that, it takes time. There's not a shortcut. Um, but we're very confident that, that that foundation is in place because of the leadership team and the people who joined recently. I could start, Peter, by talking about Google buying Zagat. That was announced today. Where does that leave a company like Yelp? Yeah, I think uh, Zagat had been on the market for a number of years. And I think we first heard about them being for sale two years ago at a price tag that was probably a multiple of what it sold for today. Uh, I think it was said best when someone said recently that buying Zagat, uh, if you're competing with Wikipedia, um, yeah, sorry, buying Zagat if you're competing with Yelp, if you take that as the example, would be like buying the Encyclopedia Britannica if you're competing with Wikipedia. It, and, and what that means is that, you know, Yelp, in our view, is the definitive local guide. And we have 60 million users that come to the site every month. Mobile as a use case is growing at over 100%. Um, and restaurant reviews are a small part of, of, of Yelp. They're less than a third of the reviews. So we look at, at the model that Zagat has, much like I would look at Encyclopedia Britannica, a, a publisher business model. Uh, there's huge latency in the review content. It's not fresh. Uh, and I think ultimately the consumers have decided they prefer the transparency and freshness and, and engagement that a broader community offering can deliver, in, both for Wikipedia and for Yelp. Now, Yelp recently pulled back on the Daily Deals business. CEO Jeremy Stoppelman wrote, wrote uh, you know, quite a long post about why. Do you think the Daily Deals business is inherently a bad business? I think of it in, in a way maybe different than uh, our peers. It's effectively an ad unit. And the question you have to add, ask if you have an ad unit, which is a discount ad unit, is what kind of consumer do you get with that ad unit, uh, someone looking for a discount? For a lot of businesses, that's not necessarily the customer base that they want to they attract. Um, secondly, you have to ask, can you get effective inventory? And if you don't have intention-filled traffic, Google has inventory for free because they have a great search engine. Yelp has inventory for free because we have people searching out local businesses. If your ad unit requires you to buy users, to buy the people that want to see that ad, I think long term, that's a very weak barrier. You know, we've seen that already hundreds of, of replicas can be created. And it makes me wonder long term, both for the provider of that ad unit, can they sustain a margin structure? Nothing's worse than being in the public market and having decaying margins. So Groupon is endeavoring to enter the public market. I mean, do you think they have a weak business model? I think you could argue in oftentimes we've had this debate inside Benchmark that they're at peak profit. If you, if you look at the cost that it takes um, for both require those customers, what's the repeat usage? And then at a deeper level, and this is the thing I guess you know, we mostly con are concerned about, is a 40 to 50 percent rake in an ad network is extraordinarily high. And it's not been proven it can be sustained over the long run unless you have proprietary inventory. Native people coming to your site because you've built an experience that they want to visit, like Google, and we believe like companies like Yelp. All right, Peter Fenton of Benchmark Capital. Next time we'll have to have you back to talk about the companies that you are excited about. Thanks for joining us here on Bloomberg West.